somebody won the game. I just think it's not smart game. to remove the cancel completely because if you have someone doing something they shouldn't be able to do, like from I want to know. From a security standpoint, you're absolutely right. If right. Somebody's playing a game and doing it. You need to be able to figure it out. But I want to make certain that that person who canceled does not show up as having dug it. Right. Because that that actually can be. And that it doesn't because like you've got the option to check them back in again. Yep. I mean they go completely right. back to blank. If they, they do that, get a ballot. And then they get a ballot. Right. If they, if they were to again. check in again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And that that's fine. But I think the only way you're gonna really figure this out is if you sit in front of that poll book and you do the numbers right in front of the poll book. You know, because we can keep talking about this until we're blue in the face. I'm I'm if it shows that he's canceled, you know, one person's canceled, that doesn't that doesn't go into the count. Okay, like the voided and the and the spoiled ballots. If, if you do void it and spoil it, it would go into the count. Yeah. No well, but your that normal that situation where you void it would be like they don't want to get unchecked in. They right. just give it back to you exactly. typically and like I don't yeah. want to vote this and walk yeah. out. And, that's and then you can account for one voter ballot. Right. right. Because it's a void ballot to that voter who exactly. showed up and abandoned their ballot. Exactly. And it shows up to be So I, I don't know how to differentiate that for the one who doesn't want to be checked in and the one who doesn't care. Because the one who doesn't want to be checked in isn't checked in and he isn't counted as a voter. But he has already been checked in and is now showing as canceled is the the problem not, that I see. If he's canceled, he's not checked in. He's not checked in any longer. That's right, he's not. Right. But he's still showing as canceled, which is the number of the canceled slash void ballot. Does that get printed out on any of them? It's just on that summary screen just on the poll pad. Yeah. yeah. And it's used to reconcile the ballots. I mean, that's it. Your ballot reconcile and your votes but, are two but, different numbers that you're reconciling. But if it gets checked in and then it gets checked out, that has no effect whatsoever on the ballots unless you decide to either void it yeah. or show it as spoiled, and there's no reason to do that. So, who wants to be in charge of this and come up with a plan? <laughs> I guess that's my question. Like, I mean, I think we're going to disagree or not see eye to eye on it the whole time. And that's okay. Like, I get it. It's it's a lot of different numbers that you have to source mm -hmm. and reconcile. But we need a plan that's consistent for everyone because it all needs to be the same way. I, I would recommend if you cancel someone, they, that number goes into the tally. Okay. What now, tally? The it says these votes were canceled. Those ballots go back into the stack. And if you have a discrepancy at the end of the day, you can look first at the canceled one to say that that number of canceled voters includes the number of, of ballots, the discrepancy in the number of ballots. So that they can get canceled and totally removed from the bill first if they return the ballot and it had no marks on it. Let me complicate it. What if somebody comes in, you check him in, he, you don't give him a ballot yet, he says, no, 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 I changed my mind, you cancel, and you still got a ballot in the stack. What do you do with it? I mean, he was still checked in. That's the canceled number, regardless. It's not whether you physically touched a ballot or not. Once you're checked you in, when I uncheck you, it changes you to canceled. Canceled, yeah. But Which doesn't necessarily there. show on your voter record. It just shows me that in the poll book, my EOs checked in one person and then canceled him. Yeah. Well, let me bring everybody's attention to the worksheet where it says voided ballots. It says this is a ballot found abandoned or the voter decided not to vote. Well, he's not a voter if he unchecked it. But it doesn't say he was unchecked. It just says he decided he, not to that, vote. That's the issue, that if he decides that, no, 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 I don't want to vote, don't but check so, me. So the, can, if I can take this from you, the problem that you guys are having, and this is just a, a 
uh, how you're looking at a thing is you're like looking at it all as one big picture. These on the front here are the check-ins. This is the poll book and the machine. That's the number yeah. checked in and the number read. Where are you? On the SOR from the training, the last page, oh, or the next to the last page. This is the last page. Last page. Yeah, yeah the other one right before it is the front the of the SOR. Okay, yeah. cool. So this is the 54. So your tally tape says this, the poll pad summary screen says this for check-ins. When you flip it over, this is the ballot reconciliations. It's completely separate yep. from the check-ins. has nothing to do with that. You are pulling 54 one time for that, but everything you're doing here is reconciling ballots. Those canceled and void are right here, and they're accounted for that's in right. that number. That, that's that's the whole issue, if they're canceled or voided. So the question before us is, do we cancel or void them if they hand a ballot? That's why I'm saying to reconcile, I think you have to. But if not, like, this has to be redone and removed. But there's going to be situations where you do have canceled and void. Because yeah, they just are, walked out, right. If they abandoned, then shame on them. If they just walked out, they weren't canceled. But if... They were voided. They were they voided. It's void. Okay, this doesn't say canceled and voided it says void i know but okay. it says canceled on the poll pad so it's so a little it, the poll pad bunches in canceled with voided so it's all one number yes that's a problem i mean voided is the ballot canceled is the voter so the poll pad is the voters again whole separate system canceled is the voter that's in the poll pad mm -hmm. Voided is a blank ballot that wasn't used. But that was a voter that was checked in. Yes. Yes. Canceled is another voter that was checked in. Canceled. But they were checked they in. Were no, they were unchecked. Yeah. They were but they unchecked. were checked initially. That's never going to go away. Like, I'm going to be able to see who That's was canceled. canceled. And, yeah. like, it, it doesn't erase that completely because it still counting on the fact that you were checked in and like we may need to get that information back. Loose unused ballots. If the if the voter comes in checking in and you uncheck them, his ballot was unused. Right. Okay. His ballot was unused. It wasn't voided. Any difference? I mean, I do, but he was checked in and not checked in. So to me, it, it voids it because that's how it's been forever. That's how we've always done it. So what I'm saying is if you want it different, like we need a guideline and a process for the whole thing for people to go by because that's not been the case before. I mean, that man that was sitting in the second row, he was trying to explain the same thing that we're trying to explain. Right. And then we talked about it after. I mean, our election officials, this is only their third time with the poll pad. They've never had this option before. Mm -hmm. But, like, Jim brought up the point with the delegates and whatnot. And we want to take away your check-in if, you if you don't want to vote in a Republican primary or whatever primary it is. So supposing we're trying to we accommodate this. everything. Okay, supposing we do this. Supposing we say once you're checked in, you're checked in. And you can't be unchecked which is what we've always done before. And, they and they walk would tell away, you to cast your ballot. And they walk away and you void the ballot. Yeah. Instead of... But then it's on your voter record. So it's the not. only difference. <clears throat> but but they, it's not according to... It's not because they could well... It's up to them to do their homework and know what election they're voting in. Okay? You don't walk into a poll check in to vote and then say, oh, I, I want you to change. So the it. difference there is if we were having a dual primary right now and you checked into the Republican one and then said, oh, no, I don't see the candidate I want to vote for. I want to vote for the Democratic ballot. You would have to give them a Democratic ballot and then account for that in your poll book because you're essentially running two elections with two different sets of numbers. So if you can do it then, I think you can do it now and you keep it consistent all the way across the board. I don't know why you would just do it for a duel and not do it 
all the time and have your election yeah. officials have that capability. How many people do that? Not many. I mean, probably less than 10 all day. Well, any, anyone want to discuss this anymore? No, I think we both want to be on the vote. The problem that we had, and I think we can take care of it, Scrub this and if you end up wasting ballots, which is no big deal. Right. It's just more than money put them in a bag. But we need to advise the election officials to refrain from encouraging people to go ahead and vote it. Because that is ultimately interfering with an election and that's against the law. It's horrible to do. Understand, but I don't think that's telling me that what we have to that do doesn't here. That speak to this. Right. But we have to have a consistent God says what we do here is just go ahead as they've done in the past, and if they check in, they can uncheck in. And that means they're not on the poll books as having voted. But if we want to complicate it and show that they totally checked in, and, and we do that with a paper trail on the ballot, then they can't turn it back. So you just write void on the blank ballot. Then if you have a discrepancy, you'll see it. It will be so the, the only of The only other option that I see is, and I don't know that this is possible, is going into the poll pad setup because we come up with all those prompts and everything and differentiating canceled and void. But I don't know that I can do I that until do that I do this, but I think more that's research. We need to certainly do in the future. The poll yeah. pad doesn't differentiate between canceled and void. No. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't account for void or spoiled because it's the poll pad and the voter check-in. It's not talking about ballots. There are two different systems that yeah. wants to reconcile totally. So. Does it account, it, it accounts for void? No. It accounts okay. for a canceled voter. It accounts for a canceled voter. It accounts for a spoiled ballot. No, a no, canceled no. voter, it's a provisional a voter, a regular voter. It's just, just the voter. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the There's, problem. Yeah. Well, this says so that's a spoiled. Whole thing, but because boy, in, yeah. your, in your precinct, I mean, essentially, you're reconciling ballots, you're reconciling the poll yeah. pad, and you're reconciling the machine. It's three different things that should all coordinate, right. but your the ballots are going to have more ticks to them because you've got spoiled, voided, provisional. I mean, you can print ballots on the touch, touch writer if someone has a disability or whatnot and needs to use that. That adds one to your total. It so. would be nice if the, if the poll pad and this tally were the same. Now, you, now you take a number from the poll pad for that, but they're not going to be the same because the poll pad's not keeping up with your ballots, and you're always essentially going to have these. more. The poll pad doesn't differentiate between all these types of ballots. That's no, because you would check someone in, but then you're saying like, oh, well, if you spoil a ballot, you need to come back to the check-in table and like let them know that you spoiled a ballot. They need to pull you up, say that that was spoiled. It's going to ruin your whole process within because like they're already moving on checking in other people we're just trying to have one record go away from the other to keep you some equipment some have a problem if somebody well, if somebody can withdraw and say no uncheck me in and they get unchecked in and but we go about and put a v on the ballot and void it I don't have a problem with that, just so it doesn't show up on the voter book, on the rolls of their voters in their calendar. They don't want I mean, I almost think that you we should just tell the election officials, like, okay, I'm at the check-in table. You're coming to check in. You check in, I give you your ballot, you go look at it and bring it back to me and say, oh, I don't want to vote for this, and hand it to me. I almost think you should just say, do you, do you want this to show up on your voter record, or do you want me to uncheck you in from this election? I mean... It doesn't and matter. then you just void the ballot either way. The ballot's going to get a V on it either way. 
Yeah. Right? Give them the option. But that's you that's ask them, is. like, do you want this Mom, to that's, show? That's the best way to do it. And I think that's the simplest way. You just tell everyone that the chief's going to be the only one canceling it anyway because yep. they're going to have the password. And we get to talk with them. Um, Nice and then if you and then in the end if you have a discrepancy between the canceled between the voter tally and the the voided ballots all of this bunch here in this basket right here and if you're well, voiding the, them there should be no discrepancy yeah, well, the you chief, the chief, the chief, the chief, chief's getting into it to undo something it's going to be nothing the chief's going to be nothing in there about that yeah and then you so look at the cancel the right but, but if you void it it should make so no difference that. so you would have a void for still a checked in batter batter um, voter and still a um and a voter who doesn't get unchecked in but okay. either way it's all accounted for I clarify the policy that you already have so that all of the election officers i, I move that lauren will make it clear What's to be done if somebody decides to cancel wants to be unchecked off of the register? That the ballot will be void. marked void. Yep. And the voter will have the option of being unchecked in. Right. And so clarify that for all of the election officers. Don't allow any more arguments about it, and then we'll see how it plays out. Yep. How's and that? Go from there. And it's not an issue in November. It's only primary. Yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. really shouldn't face this again well, this until is next good, year. This is yeah, a but the law is changing, and we will be going to primaries in our convention. Right. So we'll be doing more. Right. We need to fix it. Because the problem is reconciling this with mm -hmm. this. It's no can do. More entries here than there were. Right. So we're going to have to look at the future date on this. They will get. They notified. will get. We will be notified. Yeah, they will be notified. Okay. And the chiefs are the only ones that have this capability, yeah, so we see them the day before the election the for right. equipment. Yeah. Are they the only ones who can void a ballot? No. Election officials can void a ballot because if you just turn in and like don't want to be canceled, anybody can do that. Then the chief has to make sure that that ballot's voided. Because we have a few election officials that think they can put it back in the stack. Right. That's going to be the chief's job to take this information back to them right. Right. and spread it. Yes. So are we in agreement? Yes. Yes. Okay. Voting equipment. That's new. So, oh, actually, I have, I need, this is the updated emergency polling facility thing that I need you to sign. Okay. What do we do? Do we write to the state and say we finished this by May sixth? No, that's that's from the fire department. You yes, just and wanted this a, goes a hard copy plan. signed one and I need a signature from you on that. Yes, and this goes in that yeah. plan. Do we send that plan to the state or do we just no, tell them we did the, it? We tell them we did it and you already signed that letter and I've done that, so that's all done. Okay. Because the deadline has been kind of confusing for me. Yeah, the deadline's coming on and I've already done all that with the um it's coming it, on. Come and gone. Come and gone. It was earlier this month, like the beginning yeah, of the month. Yeah, it's May 6th. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that's all been turned just, in. This is just... Um, yeah, that, that was just the hard okay. copy that you wanted with the real signature. I got it from Brian yesterday, so I need a signature from you there. And then the purchase of equipment. So... We need to purchase one more scanner for the absentee voting, which has already, the purchase has already been approved from the Board of Supervisors. I do need approval from the Electoral Board in minutes before I can make any equipment purchases or anything. So that one's just because we um, used to have two spare pieces of equipment and now that we have to use an extra scanner in the absentee precinct, for the by mail and the in-person votes to be separated it puts us down to one backup scanner and we're going to purchase a new one okay.
So if you guys are okay with that. Hey, no, okay. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. This, I want to remind you, this is supposed to be renewed annually. Okay. Annually, as of 13 April. Okay. And when you sign the document, you don't need to have this signed thing. So. Okay. Okay. There you go. Thank now, you. proceed with the budget. So, do, do you all as a board approve the purchase of one scanner? It won't happen until after July 1 because that money is appointed in our next fiscal year's budget. I do see, I have it out copies of the budget as well. Mm -hmm. That's electoral board uh, 10,000 that's what they call it. Yes. You add up to that. No, so that's included in that 10000 That's what that request is for. That's for. But I do need electoral board approval before I can make that purchase. So that's in the amount. What was the talk that you had earlier about amount to okay, so the current year budget? So the other purchase that I want to make is in regards to Senate Bill 3 and House Bill 927, voting systems reporting absentee results by precinct. We want them the uh, package. Uh, you mean for today's meeting? Yep. No, I can make you copies of whatever you need for that. But anyway, the, the bill goes into effect July 1, 2022, and the bills are identical, and they are resulting in absentee ballots cast by voters assigned to each precinct in the registrar's locality to have to be reported by precinct. So starting November, once we close the polls in the cap on election night, the tally tape is going to have to report each precinct individually on it. So it'll say Oak Park and then have the number of ballots that were specific to Oak Park and have their results and do that nine different times. So that's new and never had to be done before. The only way that we can do that is we're going to have to have a ballot style for each precinct. And when you come in to vote early, I'm going to have to give you the correct ballot to match the precinct that you live in. So we've never had ballot styles before, or, or different ballots. Is voting early and voting absentee the same thing? Absentee is by mail, early is in person. Okay, are the counties the same? Because On two you different machines. From absentee to early, and I'm, that confuses me. Well, so the, the first request that I just told you about is because uh, is needed because absentee has to be calculated on a separate machine. Okay. So that's the one that I told you we'll put in my right. office, we'll use for the pre-processing of the absentee ballots, and then close it the Friday after the election. So that one, one machine, the second machine is just going to have by mail votes on it. But the in-person machine, which the second machine will do it too, both of them will have to, but the in-person machine that's in my office for when you come in and vote right. is going to give you nine different results of results, essentially. Because you're from a different precinct and the ballot has because to now, precinct. Because now we have to report the results by precinct. So right. typically, like if I had a thousand voters vote early in the cap, it would tell you a thousand and it would just give you the number Right. for each candidate but right. now it's going to be broken down nine different ways within that early. thousand yes early. okay so because of this right. we've got two options we we order our ballots now from heart so i would have to guess on how many i need for each precinct for early, early voting. voting and if you run short or if you have big turnout in one or the other you would have to order more pay shipping the other option is I can buy something that prints them for you as you need them, and there would never be any waste. So ballots are about 40 cents a ballot, and in a couple elections, you could pay for the machines, essentially. And you wouldn't have to guess. You wouldn't have things shipping in and out. You just print them there. The other positive to these are the situation we ran into last November with running low. You can print a hundred of these at a time, like just with the push of a button, instead of having to print each one individually, and it takes one minute to print one on a you touch writer. Printed on that paper, though. 
the paper you can buy from like Staples at a cheaper rate, but it's the same thing. Yeah, you have it's like twenty five pound instead of twenty or something. It's a little bit thicker. That's awesome. Well, they have it'll have like an individual marking. It's not like it's copies of ballots, but it's the same thing that they do there. We'll just be able to do it here. So you go to Staples, you buy twenty five pound bond, and you bring it to the office, and you print ballots on it. But you have to print ballots, like, they're each going to have an individual hash mark and only be able to be scanned one time. It's the same same method that we're so using right saying, now. So you've explained that we have to dis distinguish between precincts in early voting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our option is to buy a bunch of ballots in advance or to print them here and we need to buy some sort of mechanism that will enable you to print those ballots out of the printer in the office. Yes, we would just sit it on our desk and like if I check you in and you live in Wolftown, I'll tell it to print Wolftowns and it'll print one ballot for you individually okay. and then run reports at the end of each day for like how many ballots okay. we've printed and can reconcile. And how much is that mechanism? So there's two different options. The, the first company that makes it is the same ones that are our poll pads. It's called a poll print and we don't need this big chamber device. That's just an extra thing. So it's, it's just going to be a printer and one poll pad and the poll pad is what you would press to tell it which ballot style to print. This one for... So your printer won't do it anymore? Your no, this has to be a, a, totally a printer that goes printer. with theirs, yeah, and it's all oh, wrapped nice. up in the handy dandy cost. So this one's 4850 